Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name's Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be giving you a brief introduction in how to do image post-processing inside of cables. Okay, let's get started. First off, we're going to start by making a main loop. We're going to connect this to an orbit controls, so later on we can rotate the scene. We're going to plug this into a sequence. I'm now going to get a mat cap material new. This is material to add to a shape. We're then going to get a random cluster up. So allow me to generate many instances of a shape. And then I'm going to make a sphere. And now I want to apply a texture to the mat cap material. So I make a texture up. I click here on file, browse, go to the library. And I want to find something nice and shiny. So I'll grab this one. Okay. Now I can look around because of the orbit controls. So uh, now we have something on the screen. We need to turn this into a texture. Now there's a very easy way to do this. We go here and we click in between and then we type in render to texture up. Uh, the image has now disappeared because we've rendered it to a texture. To see this, it's really simple. We make a full screen rectangle up. Render to texture has a texture out and a depth texture out. We're only going to use this one today. So we're going to get the out and plug it to the input of full screen rectangle. If I make this bigger, you can see that there's a few jagged edges. It's not so crisp. This is because of the texture sampling. So we click the render to texture up. Go down here to anti-aliasing and put it on times eight. And now we've got a sharp, crisp image again. So <clears throat> let's just explain a little bit what's happening here. If I press F, we see the signal flow. So what happens is render to texture, looks at what's underneath it, sees the material, sees the random cluster, and it sees the sphere. This information then comes back here and is then sent out. A lot of people expect it to work the other way around, but that's not how it happens. So it starts here, flows down, the processed result comes back out there. So now I want to do some basic post-processing. So you're going to use two ops for this. The first one is image compose. This allows you to compose an image into uh, what we're looking at on the screen. And underneath this, we'll get the draw image up. Now, we're going to recreate this, disconnect, get the output, and we plug it into the image input of draw image. We get the output from image compose. And now we have the original image again. This is our basic pipeline to do basic post-processing. So for example, if I go down here, and I type in flip, which is a GL texture effect, just to show how this is working. Like I said before, hit signal flow, image compose, looks at draw image, calculates flip, brings it back here, sends it through to that. So I click on flip, and this will allow me to flip the image on its X or Y axis. I can delete this. I can replace it with blur. And if I now click blur, I can lower the amount. These things can be stacked though. So I could now go underneath blur and get the flip effect again. So in this way, we can just stack post-processing ops easily and simply. But I want to show you today how to composite two layers together. So I'm going to grab an op called edge detection. Now, as you can see, it speaks for itself. Edges are shown. We have here an amount. So this is the basic edge detection. And what I want to do is I want to put this back into the original image so that my spheres have like a glowing white outline to them. So if I go here now and press Control C, Control V, I make a copy and I connect to trigger. And I'm now going to get the original image and put this here. And just to show you what's happening here, I'll disconnect this one reconnect this one. Now I've lost the edge detection. So if I want to compose these two together, it's really simple. I just make another draw image up 
And I now get the output from the edge detection and I plug it in here. But now we've lost the screen uh, that we originally had with the spheres. Now I'll explain why. Um, almost all draw image and post FX ops have here a blend mode and an amount. So remember the top to bottom order. So this is contributing an amount of one. If I turn this to 0 0.5 and lower, we start to see the original image come back. Now the way this is added to this is determined by blend mode. Uh, this is something you can uh, Google. Uh, they're just Photoshop blend modes, basically. Uh, it's far too extensive for me to cover in this video. I'm interested right now in adding the white edge. So I click Add, and as you can now see, I have a white glowing edge around my spheres. Uh, if I pull them out down, it's gone. Add it back. So now let's say that I would want to change the color of uh, the edge detection. I can go here. I can pull down. I can grab color selector and an interesting thing happens the whole screen goes white why is this well this has to do with the blend mode and the amount once again so what's happening is color is doing normal so the whole screen becomes a color so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this on multiply sorry and now what happens is only the edges are multiplied with this color. Just to show you what's happening here, I can disconnect this and I can put it there. So now I can pick a different color. So let's put it back the way it was. Now let's say I want this glow to be a little bit warmer and softer. I could grab a blur. 10 is way too much, and I'm going to turn it down to 1. And as you can see, we now get this warm, glowing look to everything. If I put this on 0, it becomes hard. If I put it on 1, we get a kind of like very gentle, subtle bloom effect. So something that's really interesting in cables, it's a new addition, is the texture preview pipeline. So I'm going to click here, and as you can now see, I can see different stages of the render impasse. So if I click this, it jumps to this render to texture object and shows me this is what is coming out there. If I click this, this shows me now the edge detection pipeline. If I click this, this shows me the image compose pipeline. This is a really handy way to be able to look at things without having to disconnect and connect things like you saw me doing. But I just wanted to show you how things get connected basically. So one last thing is, this is just again another um, image compose pipeline. So I could go here now and I could apply something to everything. So let's get chromatic aberration. This simulates a lens shift um, by shifting the RGB channels. I'll just turn it up a lot so you can see what's happening. So let me put this on 10. It's really exaggerated. I'm going to put it on smooth and do this. Just add it a little bit. And now I can add lens distort, which kind of shows what's going on. It's really exaggerated, but I want to make clear what we're doing here. So now I've got a, a scene which looks a little bit more post-processed. I could now go here and add, for example, a vignette two effect, which makes it look like an old image. So if I make the radius less, you can see it kind of fades out, fades in. And I could continue to add things to the end of this channel, or I could add new image composed channels to uh, composite again into a new image. So those are the basics of doing uh, post-processing inside the cables. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them on the forums or to post them in the comments below. Thanks for your time and happy patching.